Hi, in this video I want to talk to you about Introduction to Classical Mechanics with Problems and Solutions by David Morin. So, first off, David Morin is a very incredible author, in my opinion. Um, I've read multiple of his books now. I think they, are, they really do stand out as incredible texts. And this, this text here is probably one of the best ones I have read by him. So we can see that this book is printed by Cambridge Press. So you can pretty much guarantee if a book's printed by Cambridge Press, it's good quality. And that's the case here. Excellent sort of hardcover. As you can see, good binding. Good hardcover, pretty much always by Cambridge Press. So jumping right into the book, also note that the pages on here have got a pretty glossy finish. So yeah, good paper quality and just good overall printing quality by Cambridge Press, as always. Introduction to Classical Mechanics, Problems and Solutions. David Morin, Harvard University, Cambridge University Press. So table of content. So first off, we've got strategies for solving problems. Now, this book is really different and in a really good way too. First off, as we can see, strategies for solving problems. And I have not seen books contain something like this. And this was really cool. It was actually a really awesome chapter to read. It um, highlights uh, a systematic approach on how you can solve physics problems. And it was really insightful. It talked um, about some approximation cases, limiting cases, which is a really cool, it's a really um, effective method of determining whether or not you have the correct solution. And then it talks briefly about solving differential equations numerically, which is of course a topic within computational physics. Next he's got statics. So pretty, in, pretty strange layout if I must admit. Instead of going into a topic like kinematics, it's not even in this book. He jumps right into Newton's laws, but f specifically first starting with static systems. So he jumps right into both uh, forces and uh, torques, which I found interesting. It's a good chapter. I mean, it's pretty short, but yeah, just highlights this um, part of Newton's laws. And then it goes into the next chapter using F equals MA. So this is where it really jumps into Newton's laws. This is a good chapter. I feel like it talks about, um, specifically, as you can see, it talks about differential equations uh, with Newton's laws, which I think is really important. I think it's interesting that he's mentioning it here in a introduction book. Motion in the plane with polar coordinates as well. I think that's really good. Something that's really strange about this book, and this is probably one of the strangest books I actually have, and there's one reason for that, and he highlights here in his preface why that is, but this book is very, very strange. It is not an introduction to classical mechanics. Not kind, of, not like the book by Kleppner and Colin Cowell, where it's just a really, really rigorous, um, difficult introduction text. This book here, it's like it combines introductory, introductory material and then it directly combines it with like second year or harder level material. And he states the reason for this is because the class he was teaching at Harvard you, um, did cover like an honors class that covered sort of more introductory topics. But it also covered, of course, as you can see, the Lagrangian method and more advanced topics in mechanics. So it's a very strange course. And of course, hence, it's a very strange book. But nevertheless, it doesn't take away from the fact that this book is an excellent text on classical mechanics. Next, we get into oscillations, and this is the, the difference that I was trying to make. This chapter pretty much exactly parallels the chapter on oscillations from Taylor's book, and hence this is a good book to use with Taylor for um, all the subjects that it does cover that's also in Taylor. So as you can see, we've got the differential equation solutions to simple harmonic motion, damped harmonic motion, and driven harmonic motion. And, if, and interesting enough here, it covers co coupled oscillations here as well, which I found interesting because in Taylor, of course, there's an entire chapter for coupled oscillations in normal modes. Next, we've got conservation of energy and momentum. This is more of a um, honors level topic. He doesn't really go into the level of Taylor, but nevertheless, it's still a, actually a really good chapter on conservation of energy and momentum. Particularly, it's talking about the center mass frame and all that kind of stuff that's um, really essential when discussing these topics. It's a really good chapter in my opinion. And now he jumps into the Lagrangian method. Now, um, he doesn't do what Taylor does in Taylor. Uh, he has a whole chapter dedicated to variational calculus, but uh, in Morin he just jumps right into all the material um, for the Lagrangian method. 
Personally, uh, I think this chapter is pretty good. I mean, it sort of parallels Taylor's um, in lots of ways, but at the same time, I feel like this doesn't quite give you enough background for you to like, truly appreciate the Lagrangian method of classical mechanics. So I think I still think it's a good chapter. I think it's good if you've got Taylor to also read this section. Um, it covers a lot of the same stuff, particularly like Noda's theorem. Over, it also covers here, which I don't think it does cover in Taylor. I don't actually remember, but it covers small oscillations as well. And it does talk briefly here about the principle of stationary action. And I think it's good that he actually called it stationary action, not principle of least action. Next up, he's got central forces. And this is pretty much, again, um, well, I mean, it, it's, it kind of parallels um, Taylor's chapter on the, on the subject as well. It talks about effective potentials. Next, angular momentum part one. So he has two parts here. Part one is kind of like the honors level material. And part two is like Taylor level material. So once again, very strange, very strange book. So the part one, of course, it's, it's talking about a constant angular momentum. Um, of course, constant angular momentum vector. So it does, it's not changing, usually parallel to the axis of rotation. And of course, the general angular momentum is when it changes. Thus, you have things like the principal axes, inertia tensor, and of course, more advanced topics. And here he, dis he discusses gyroscopes, uh, symmetric tops, that kind of stuff, precession and mutation also. Um, this chapter is pretty good. I think it does a lot of things quite well, but I think it also sort of dumps in a bunch of unnecessary theory um, into this chapter. I feel like the notation in this chapter is a bit hard to follow. Uh, if you're wanting the mathematics particularly, I'd much more recommend Taylor. I think that he does attempt to, have, to give you more of an intuition behind uh, gyroscopic motion and precession. Uh, I think he does succeed in some ways by doing that, so this is more of an intuitive chapter. I would probably recommend combining this with Taylor's chapter on um, rigid body dynamics. Accelerating frames of reference. This chapter is good. I think it does uh, relate to Taylor's chapter quite well. I personally really enjoyed this chapter as well. I read this alongside Taylor. I think it's good. It's got pretty much the same topics. Then it jumps into relativity. So of course we've got first we've got the kinematics of relativity surrounding the difference between the Galilean and the Lorentz transformations, uh, velocity additions, that kind of stuff. It talks about Minkowski diagrams. And next, of course, we've got relativity and the dynamics portion of special relativity. So this talks, of course, about um, the consequences of the kinematics. Then it has a whole section here on four vectors, which I thought was actually really good. Then it discusses at the end here some general relativity principles. And I thought this was kind of cool that it just sort of introduced you to sort of the concepts behind GR. Then we've got some appendices where it's got some multivariable and vector calculus results and just some, uh, and some also some linear algebra results, partic particularly for the section on um, the inertia tensor. Now the content in this book is good, as I just said. I think it's good content. I think uh, Morin is an excellent author. I think he is quite, he has a good pedagogical style, um, but also is fairly rigorous in his treatment. But the main thing that stands out with this book, and of course it is illustrated in the title, with problems and solutions. Not many books come with full solutions, but Marin has managed to managed to essentially do that. If you look at the back, it contains more than 250 problems with solutions. And then of course it contains also 350 unworked exercises. Now, this is of course password protected, but the fact that this has 250 problems with full, fully worked solutions is just it's incredible. It's incredibly helpful for people like me. Um, I am self-taught, of course, and other people like me that are self-studying physics. These problems aren't just a bunch of plug and chugs or any really standard boring questions. These problems, I have to say, are some of the most incredible selection of problems I've ever seen. I do not think I have seen a book that compiles such interesting, insightful problems. And Morin has a gift, um, or whoever wrote these problems, I'm not particularly sure if Morin actually wrote all these problems or not, but the problems in this book somehow taken pretty easy subjects and made extremely hard problems for those subjects. I'll give you an example of some of the problems in this book. Um, I have done quite a few of them myself. Um, I'm still, of course, working just through the problems in this book because um, there are so many of them, but this is a great book. A book like Morin is you can continuously just come back in your free time and just sort of revise 
a lot of your physics, but also just have a really fun time doing so. I should also mention that this book has a star rating, like all of Moran's books, and I love star ratings. I think they're an incredible additive to ex exercise sections and books. These problems are so insightful, and they will really challenge you. Like, a lot of these problems are really, really challenging. His four stars, and he, I'll quote, I will show you, and four star problems are really, really, really hard. And he really isn't lying. <laughs> these four stars um, are very difficult problems. I've, I've never quite seen problems of this difficulty before, but they're really fun to go through. They're really just fun to challenge yourself and work on them. And since there's so many of them in this book, you're really not short for difficult problems. And one more thing that Moran does illustrate, and I also think this is very important and I will um, relay it here as well. When solving questions, when you get the opportunity to read a book as good as this and look at problems as good as this, really go through them as much as possible. Like, do not look at the solutions until you've come up with a solution yourself. That is really the principle I go by because if you just get stuck on a problem and immediately look at the solution, you're not going to gain much from that problem. And you also probably won't enjoy it as much. But the reality is some of these problems might take you a very long time to solve. And that's okay. It's fine if they take if they take a long time to solve because doing so and having to go through that struggle will really um, make the knowledge and the information you know about the topic really sink in. And that's how you get good at math and physics is by doing math and physics. And you will struggle with problems. Um, and he illustrates this heavily in all of his books that you really should come up with a solution yourself first before you look at a solution. Even if you do get stuck, just go back through the chapter, reread read the examples, etc., and just try and come up with a solution yourself. And I think that's a really good principle to, to go by. And then here's a section of exercises which do not have solutions. These are mainly for instructors that want to assign homework problems. And these are, again, very good problems, really fun to work on, as you can see. And of course, he's got the solutions to each question, and these are fully worked solutions. So overall, I think if you're studying classical mechanics, whether you're studying honors classical mechanics or uh, classical mechanics at the level of Taylor, so like your second course, this book is a no-brainer. Pick it up. It's actually a pretty cheap price, too. I think I only got this for like roughly 50 or 60 New Zealand dollars. So it's actually a really cheap hardcover from Cambridge University Press, but it's still a very good quality hardcover. So yeah, just overall, this book is really good to anyone who's learning classical mechanics or just anyone that really likes solving problems, especially difficult problems. This is just a no-brainer. Buy it now. It's just incredible.